Hey H3 and welcome to a tutorial on the sync. Specifically, I am going to teach you how to actually program in this game because it seems a lot of people are struggling with that and I can imagine why because it's quite daunting at first but with a little hope I hope you will be able to make any program you want. Now to help you understand whether or not you should watch the rest of this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build your own program from scratch, how to take that step by step how to optimize the program once you have it doing the basics that you need it to, how to debug your code if it's not working. Basically, I'm just going to teach you how to program in this game. I'm not going to show you ready-made examples. We are going to end up with a complete program, of course. Um, but the whole point of this video is to show you how to make your own. Now, if that sounds good to you, make sure you like the video already before you forget to do so. And let's get to it. Now before we get into all of that I do want to point out that you can do a lot of things in this game without actually programming anything at all. For example over here I set the, this uh, visual to metal ore, I link the visual to the miner so they know to start mining or looking for metal ore whenever they can. And I programmed these to dump this in the storage bot over here and I also programmed them to move to the storage bot if they have nothing else to do. So whenever I move this ball around, I just move this to an area in anywhere near metal ore. And then these these mining bots over here will actually follow this one around and start mining where they are. Right now they're still mining here because they, well, they still have resources. But as soon as they deliver to the storage bot, they will turn back and start mining over here. Very simple, zero programming involved, at least no programming in terms of behaviors. Okay, but let's say you want your bots to do something more complicated, like building something that is off-grid, so it's not connected to your network. Uh, how do you manage to do that? Well, pretty much any program that holds for this game, but any program in general, is trying to think of all the smallest steps you can that need to take place in order to actually achieve your goal. So first of all, how does the robot even know that there's a building site over here? We need a radar to detect this building site. So let's bring in a radar bot. It's just a dash bot. I just renamed it. Uh, it has a solar cell because it might be moving off grid and it has a radar. Now, in order to detect this, I can set the radar to a very simple filter that scans for construction sites. Now, this is very generic, but it will find the nearest construction site, which in this case is this one. So now we have a robot that knows that we want to construct something over here. Now, how do we actually get the resources over here? Well, that is where the second bot comes in because of course we don't want this radar bot to move around because then it might find other construction sites. So we're just planting this over here and, and then we have a second bot that's going to bring the resources. Now in order for this bot to know where this construction site is, we need a signal reader. It's going to read the signal from this other bot that is now telling it, hey, look over here, there's a construction site. And that means that we are now ready to program a behavior that is going to tell us what to do about this construction site. Okay, so let's start with a blank behavior. First of all, we're going to add a parameter because we need to tell this thing that there is actually a construction site. And we're going to load that in um, on the main screen in a moment. So what do we need to know about this construction site? So we're going to need to know what items we actually need at that construction site. Now, luckily, there is um, a thing for that, get ingredients. So we can actually link the production site to the get ingredients. And now this will tell us what ingredients that production site needs at the moment. It only gets you three things. So if you have a larger type of building, um, that's not necessarily going to work. You can only get the first three things for now. Anyway, let's call these uh, variables and let's call these A, B, and C. Okay, so now the first thing you have to realize is that the dashboard has only has two inventory slots, so it's only going to be able to carry two items. That's a problem I'm going to ignore for now, but it is something to keep in mind. Now, uh, let's say for the moment we only are going to carry two items, what do we want to do? Well, we need the items to actually get to the bot. It's pretty complicated to actually have the bot pick those up themselves. But in this game, we can request items as well. Um, we need to request two different items. So let's add that in two times. Um, let's link those items to the ones that we just got from the get ingredients. So now we're actually telling the dashboard to request item A and request item B. Let's assume now that the bot hash has the two items. 
what do we want it to do next? Well, we want it to actually bring the items to the location where we have the building being built. Okay, so <laughs> we get it to do that. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You have the drop off items command that will actually tell the bot to go there and drop items off. However, I, and that's just something you find out by testing it. Um, this actually doesn't work for components. It works fine for actually items like circuit boards, metal ore, things like that. Um, but if you have components on your buildings, you might likely have those. This won't actually work and you need a different command. In this case, you need transfer, transfer, I can type, transfer to. So we're going to transfer something to something. The target in this case is once again our construction side. What are we going to transfer? Well, we're going to transfer item one or item a sorry and then we're go also going to transfer item b and then hopefully we have the two items that we need in order to start building so this in theory should work right well it doesn't actually and i did that on purpose but I'll, i'm actually going to show you how to debug your own code so let's assume for the moment this works and let's just run it to see what it does now, in order to start our behavior, don't forget, we have to actually link this construction site that is now being told to the input for our behavior. This is the construction site. Um, and now we can start the behavior. So it's going to get the ingredients so far so good. I am building a little bit of a turret here that has two small turrets. It's just a simple, small uh, building. And it is now requesting two different types of items. It's requesting the plates and it's requesting one turret. Now it needs more than that. It needs two turrets as well as two circuit boards, but this is all it can carry. So, so far, so good. Now the first items are about to arrive and watch what happens. So as soon as the plates get in here, it's like, hey, I got items to drop off and it rushes over and drops them off at the construction site. And as you can see, it now replaces the plates with the secondary turret. The problem now is it's off the grid and the second turret will never arrive at this bot because the other bots don't know where to find it. As you can see, the first turret is actually still arriving because that was requested before the construction bot moved away. But this second turret will never arrive. Okay, so let's rewind time a little bit and see if we can adjust our behavior in order to fix this problem. So there were actually two problems. First of all, it moved away before it had all the resources. And the second problem was that the rest of the resources are never going to arrive by means of this bot. So if we want to do all the construction by means of this bot, we're going to need to solve both problems. Let's focus on the first problem first. It was moving before we wanted it. And well, let's see how we can stop that. So we know we're going to need items A and items B. Initially, we have an empty inventory. So as long as our inventory is doesn't have at least one item A or one item B, we don't want it to start moving. So what we can do is add some math to this. Um, specifically, we can ask it to count. It was actually on the unit. So before we tell it to move, we're going to do some counting. We're going to count item A. This will give us a result. Let's call that uh, D because we have A, B and C already over here. Then we are going to compare that. Uh, that's under math. So let's do that over here. We're going to compare value D and we're going to need this to be at least one. So if this is equal to one, we can move because it might only be one item or if it's larger than one we assume we have enough of those items and we can start moving now if it's not at least one so there's no items that we are requesting in the inventory just yet we are going to tell it to wait now we can tell it to wait for let's say uh 10 ticks don't maybe and don't even need this waiting but just to show you as an example it may make sense intuitively um we're just going to ask you to repeat counting until you actually find that you have all the items. Now, we're also going to add this in as a second check for the second item. And, and there we go. So first it counts item A, it checks if we have at least one of those. Then it counts item B, 
Um, I store this in again in variable D because we are not, well, we, we don't need to remember this one. So we're just overwriting the one that we already have. And again, if we have at least one of these items B, then we can tell you like, okay, so we have at least one of item A, we have at least one of item B, go ahead and deliver those things now to the target. Uh, if the item is smaller we need you to wait or we just need you to continue counting so we can actually remove this whole waiting thing and just say whenever it's smaller than a certain amount just go back and start counting keep counting basically until you have at least one of each so just to summarize until this point we have a construction site we have found the construction site by means of our radar so we now have a robot telling the other robots hey look there's a construction site over here then we have the actual construction bot reading the signal from the radar bot so this is now telling it hey there's a construction site over here we link that construction site to the behavior and in the behavior we are checking what does this construction site need step one step two request those items step three wait until we have those items in the inventory and then step four deliver those items to the construction site let's see if that is now working like intended so right now it has the plates but it's still waiting you can see the turret coming in the second turret how the turret has been delivered and as it now has a full inventory it is now moving over there and delivering the item so so far so good we are now a lot further in actually doing uh, optimizing its behavior the problem is we actually needed to get the second um, item as well or the second turret as well as the circuit boards so how do we get it to do that the answer is we don't because one of the tricks to programming is that you should try to cut things up in the smallest pieces possible and not try to make one big program that's trying to solve for world peace or anything like that so what we're going to do is we know we need three items over here we know we have a module that works to get one item from a to b actually we have one that gets two items from a to b so what is more simple than just having three robots each of them bringing a single item now remember that you can easily copy and paste things from one robot to another so that makes our life a lot easier and we can just open up the control over here now right now we're requesting two items so we're going to bring that down to only one there we go um, we only need to deliver one item as well and now we're just going to have this deliver item A. We are going to copy paste that one to the other two because it's already programmed. And then in the second robot, we're going to use that slim down program to re replace all the A's with the B's. So we know we are actually delivering item B over here. And we're going to do the same thing for robot three. With of course the exception that with robot three, we're requesting item C and delivering item C. And then we're going to run all those programs and see if it is actually working like intended. Now, let's see. This one is actually requesting the plates. This one is requesting two of the small turrets, correct? And this is requesting circuit boards. So this should be working exactly like we wanted to. All the requested items are slowly um, getting over here and working like intended. We just need the circuit boards, but here the circuit board come. And now this last spot should also be moving here. Now, there's a couple of problems, though. So for now, as you can see, these robots are still requesting resources, uh, even though there's actually nothing to build over here. This is a problem, so we needed to actually clear this. And we also don't want these robots to stick around over here in the middle of nowhere. We want them to move back to where they came from. And hopefully they will not actually be requesting this. But just in case that anything gets stuck in the inventory, we also need to make sure that they empty their inventory just so they are ready for the next source as you can see for example over now over here we had this robot requesting metal plates and it actually got them delivered to it and uh, not entirely sure how because as far as I know this is out of reach of the the grid but somehow it got it delivered so we need to make sure that whenever something gets stuck in the inventory this is cleaned out Okay, so I built a little home base for the robots to return to over here. It could be anything, but for this example, it's going to be this storage block over here. I'm going to set that to the uh, power grid position that I called it in my um, programming over here. So now how do we make it return there? If I just say, uh, if I just tell it to move after this, I could just say, for example, something like move units. Uh, do something like this and then I'll link that position to this. This 
is likely not going to work for a very simple reason. It's going to order the transfer of the item. That's fine, but it won't actually wait for that transfer to be complete. It'll actually move straight on and then it will send, try to send the unit back. That's not ideal because that will just mean the move, uh, unit might end up moving back and forth. So we don't want it to do that. Um, instead, what we probably want it to do is we are once again going to tell it to count the items. We're going to tell it to count how many items we have over here. We're still going to do something like this. And then we're once again going to compare the number. We're once again going to check if the is still... Uh, hmm. Actually, we wanted to check if this is zero now. Uh, zero. 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 And I put a zero? No. Let's put it like one. To one. And only if it's smaller. Where did my move unit go? There it is. Sorry about that. So only if it's smaller than this, then we're going to tell it to move. As long as it's uh, equal or larger, we're still going to tell the unit to keep transferring. And only once it actually is smaller than one, so it needs to be zero, then we're going to tell it to return to home base. We're going to set the other two robots as well and see if this works. Okay, turning on the behavior and once again, and this is really strange because why is this robot moving over here? Um, let's go back to the code and check that out. And if you're wondering why the hell is he not just telling me how exactly do, to do it correct? Well, that is because you're going to have to go through this process yourself every time you build a code. Even if you're really good at this, you're probably still going to make mistakes uh, finding behavior that you didn't expect. And then you need to go back in and see where things go wrong. Um, the only way it could actually move to the home base if it actually got all the way through. So that means it needed to pass this check as well as this check. Now, the first check is really weird because it never got any items. So why did it pass? So we're counting how many items we uh, have of the type we requested. That is going to give us a result. And then we're comparing that result to itself. So that's obviously a mistake because this is always going to be true. So it's going to actually move on. Then in the second loop, it's going to check how many items do I have? Well, that's going to be zero initially. Um, so that means I can move back to home base. So what we need to do is compare the value D over here to the actual value of items that we're <laughs> requesting. And that should stop the robot from going back. Now, there's actually one other thing I want to add in over here. Um, once it starts to move back, we're actually going to request nothing. This, is, this should hopefully reset the um, requesting item just to make sure that if that is actually the case we don't actually uh, request any more items that we need in the home base just in case that is still happening the first thing we're going to do as well as the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to drop off whatever items we have in our home base and we're actually going to do that over here as well um, we are going to drop off any items in the inventory before we start the entire loop over here. That is just going to make sure that there's nev never going to be items stuck in our inventory for whatever reason that are going to prevent us from actually requesting the items that we need. Now, well, again, let's see if this actually works. Okay, bots reprogrammed. Let's start them up. You can see the requesting happening. It's not moving back to home base. It's actually moving over here. Then it is checking, do I have what I need? Nope. Um, and I'm just going to move back to home base. Now these guys are still sitting around here waiting because of course they don't have the materials yet that they need. So this is all going according to plan. Now what is not going to according to plan is the fact that this robot is still requesting items that we are already delivered. Um, that's probably something you could clean up. The nice thing about this is that if everything is working like I hope it will, this robot is actually not going to deliver them anymore. Nope, as you can see, that is actually not happening. So now we just need to wait for that second turret to come in and see what happens once we actually build the building. Now, it was actually the circuit boards that we were waiting for, but anyway, the circuit boards are now being delivered. This building should now be constructed, yep. 
And the robot is moving back to home base, so that's all working like intended. And as you can see, the inventory has not been cleared. Now, the reason for that is that it is still trying to deliver the items in step 7 and 8. And, well, as you can see, it has no longer has a target, so it doesn't actually know where to deliver those items. So I don't necessarily consider the fact that requesting resources well, we don't necessarily need them a big deal because we are, of course, dumping them back into the storage spell. So that, that's not a problem. What is a problem is that it gets stuck with those resources and kind of stuck in this loop trying to deliver those resources, but it no longer has a target. So before we tell it to move to the or deliver it to the target, we need to check if that target still exists. Now, in order to do that, we can actually, let's see, um, check the unit type. And we need to put that in, in front over here. Um, let's see if this is correct. Yes. And we are going to tell it to continue with the transfer if it's a construction. And which, of course, means that there's actually a construction site to deliver those items to. And we are going to tell it that it should just move to the home base if there's no unit. This is basically if the thing where we're actually checking and that what we're checking is the construction site. So we're checking if the construction site is still a construction site. If so, deliver the resources. If there's no construction site, just move back to the home base. Uh, empty the request form and drop off any items that you still have in your inventory. So hopefully by the time the building is actually done, we should end up with something that is a completely empty inventory and good to go for the next building. And for similar reasons, I actually also updated the first loop. So rather than just counting and comparing and checking that over and over again, I actually included the, um, the check all the way up to the start, at least, well, almost the start, at least, to the unit type, but checking again once if there's a construction site, and if not, I'm just telling this uh, unit to go all the way to the end and just start moving back to home base. So if it's still requesting an item, for whatever reason, the construction site disappears, this will actually cause it to, to turn, uh, turn back to home base and stop doing what it was doing. If there is a construction site, it's going to request items like before, so this, this hasn't changed this part, the thing is that because we now include the get ingredients and request item into the loop, if the construction site changes, so for example, I'm building two buildings at the same time, one of the buildings is done, but then the radar switches to the next building, this will actually reset the target, so it will check the ingredients of the next building basically, and start requesting those, rather than first continuing to request items of the previous building, because those might be different, it's basically just this is a hard coded way to kind of reset the unit in the middle of building a building now is this needed probably not but it will make sure that the robot keeps functioning um, in more circumstances than we had before with just a small little change and again let's turn on the robots and see if they do what we want them to do we're still requesting the correct items so so far so good we are requesting these items as well the first items, the plates have been delivered and it's still requesting new ones. That's not necessarily useful, but it is what we told it to do. The uh, p the pylons have arrived. What are these called? Right, the turrets. And yes, this robot is also moving back to home base. It's currently not requesting anything, but it will restart requesting it. Yep, as soon as it arrives, that is also just fine. Now we're just waiting for the circuit boards. The circuit boards have arrived. It is delivering them. And then hopefully we should see... Um, let's check this one actually. Hopefully we should see this being reset as soon as the building is done. And yeah, as you can see, everything is now completely reset. So again, let's, let's make the final check. Let's say I build a new turret. And I built that over here. Then we should see, yep, yeah, we should see the construction robots requesting new items to build the next target. So this way, no matter where I actually build anything, if I abort this construction, we should also see... This being reset, yep. And now let's go to the complete opposite side of my base. If I start building something over here, this is outside of the grid as well. This should not pick this up because these are out of range of any radars. Where's my, uh, where's my bots? Uh, they're over here. Yep. As you can see, this is not working. 
However, now as soon as my radar bot moves into range, which it is now, if I go back to these bots, as you can see, they're once again requesting and they will move back to the other side of the map as soon as they get their resources delivered and then return back to this random storage block in the middle of nowhere um, once they're done. Of course, this is just an example, but it shows you how you can actually pretty much automate anything in the game as long as you just take it step by step, break it down into the smallest steps that need to happen. Also build it step by step. Don't try to build the entire thing and then figure out why it's not working because you're likely going to make like 20 mistakes along the way. I would at least. Um, and then it's really hard to figure out where you go wrong. Just make sure you take it step by step and then figure out uh, what the next step should be as soon as you have the first steps working correctly. So I hope you found this useful. You can now construct any building outside of your power grid. But again, this works for everything else as well. If you have specific questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to try and answer them. Um, one trick that I haven't explicitly mentioned, but you, you definitely want to kind of go through the, uh, the behavior, all the options that you have to pick, um, just so you know what you can actually do. So, for example, all, check especially all the things with the unit, but also on the global and the flow tabs. There's quite a few useful things that um, you might want to use in your code. Not everything is necessarily completely intuitive what it does, so just play around with it. For example, the, um, the unit type thing that I used over here, I can imagine that that's not the first thing you think of. Uh, but th the only way I found it out is just by dragging it in, seeing what it does, and then seeing um, what you can do with it. Don't forget there's the extra option button here as well, so you can make something explicit if you want. You don't need to use these, and uh, you can toggle them on and off, but sometimes there's something hidden in here that is really useful. Now, it really depends on what you try to do, so it's impossible for me to make a guide that actually allows you to build anything for the simple reason that that guide would probably uh, be like three weeks long. Um, but yeah, again, let me know in the comments if there's anything I can do to help. If you're still here, I hope you're now programming by yourself. And don't forget to subscribe and like if you found this useful. I hope to catch you in the next one.